Here at Huntsman, we're spoiled on a day-to-day -day basis and been surrounded by some of the finest cloths in the world. Harrisons of Edinburgh were formed in 1863. Their high standards and attention to detail made them an easy choice for us to promote this curation of cloths. With lifestyle changes afoot and walking from home becoming the norm, we've geared this selection around separates for your autumn winter wardrobe. From the wonderfully soft, extraordinary cashmere jacketing to the hard-wearing spring ram suitings, these suggestions have got you covered. Myself and Daryl Canera hope you'll enjoy some of our personal favourite go-to cloths. We are grateful to have Mark Dunsford here, who is uh, Managing Director of Harrison Edinburgh. We're kind of a bespoke merchant in one sense, that we produce special cloths just for these guys, you know. And, you know, it's, it's, it's what people like you guys want, you know, and I think mm -hmm. the customers don't have any problems with it, and I think, you know, it, it, it lasts the test of time. In, in a sense, we, I mean, one of the reasons we've worked close with you for so long is because we need cloths that lend to hand tailoring rather than manufacturing. What we picked today uh, is really um, looking an eye at uh, the, the, the trend for the future, we think, more relaxed, uh, less about suitings and more about separates. Just to kick off, we've um, we started with the Lums uh, Golden Bale Bunch. Okay. A couple of jacketings on there, uh, plastic gun club checks. Um, the Lum story is quite an interesting one, Mark. The Lum story goes back to the 1920s, really. Uh, Joseph Lum, uh, manufacturers up in Huddersfield for, for many years. Going back to the time when obviously there was a larger uh, manufacturing base, uh, a, a vertical base, a manufacturing base in, in Yorkshire. And um, Joseph Lum started uh, a group of chaps uh, that wanted to sort of separate uh, qualities of fine yarn that was coming into the country at any one time. And so they sort of got together and um, a little club, if you like, and uh, they would always grade each of the clips coming in uh, and uh, the very best clips that were sort of coming into to Yorkshire would be selected and they would get the, the Lum stamp they would be uh, the ones that were selected as the premium uh, wool for that season. And so following on from that, obviously the, the fleeces that were spun, they were woven into fabric and then certain merchants were then allowed to purchase the yarn. It wasn't just a free thing, you were allowed an allocation because there wasn't that much of it. Um, when you start separating it out, because it's end of the day, it's super hundreds. Um, and so, those few merchants that were given the license to use Long Scott Bell, well, luckily it was one was H. Lesser. And, mm. and Lesser's over the years, I think both in our time, we've been in the trade a number of years, is Lesser's was always Long Scott and Bell. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, when Lesser's sort of got into a few difficulties over the years, and we managed to sort of help them out and, and take over the company. Uh, the very first thing we did was, was get in touch with the Lums guys and say, look, we've got to have a, a bunch. Uh, we've got to get this back up. It's, it's a fabulous quality. It's the best of the best Super 100 you can get. And it makes a fabulous suit, flannel, and, and, and then combined with it, with another other materials, even mohair and cashmere, you can make a fabulous coating for it or jacketing, whatever. So. The Lums is and will remain you know, the pinnacle for us in terms of, of suiting and cloth really. Even if you go the high numbers, that's sort of 12.5 micron, they are lovely things. But if, like us, you love a British fabric, that's probably the number one. Yeah, we certainly know from dealing with our customers when people come in and want a classic English Savile Row suit is the go-to book. Of quality yeah, yeah. and the durability, etc. That's always been the staple yeah. for us. We actually use two two counts of yarn, and we made four different uh, qualities within that. So we had a plain weave that was down to eight ounces, and then we had a to seventies twos, which made it sort of 10, 11, 12 ounce, and then we spun it to fifty twos count, and that got you a nice flannel, and that was another part of the whole mix, was to sort of mix it up a little bit more. Um, to sort of give you a sort of 
you know, an all round sort of selection of cloths within the, what is a typical. At the end of the day, you've got an 18.5 micron cloth. You, you can't make it heavier. You can only spin it to different sizes to make a different quality fabric. And um, in all, it, it is the same thing. It's just a lovely, a lovely thing to work with. This is, this is the Lums jacketing, okay? So I'm going to show that to you guys here. If I can. How's that? Lots of colours to pick out with accessories, right? You do red, I mean, cords, red sweater. Everything, everything here. This is why we pick these colours, because you can put it with everything. It's because we didn't make the red too strong, but red's always hard to sell. But this is more of a soft uh, coloured red. It's not strong, so you can still get away with everything with this. It's actually got more of a blue tinge to it that comes across mm. on camera. That's the grey version. Now we've included a couple of flannel trousers uh, to go in there. Yeah, we're talking about the separates, I mean obviously this isn't a trend that's just uh, happened. This is a trend that's been ticking along the floor for a little while now. I think people are getting less formal in terms of suiting. They certainly want to be wearing uh, formal wear. Uh, they still want to get dressed up. Um, thank goodness. Uh, the thing is people are wanting to wear separates more. There's no question about that. And so we did introduce the Lums jacketing, which is the 52 count, which is a slightly uh, woollier, softer uh, version because it's obviously a bit of a coarser count. Um, but it makes a lovely jacket. I mean, it's it's, it, it's hard to explain to somebody who hasn't got one uh, how nice it is to wear if you uh, you know haven't had one before. It's uh, it's very much an autumn, winter, uh, sort of spring. Uh, weight, so it's sort of perfect time to sort of think about whether you want that sort of thing in your wardrobe. Um, and it's lovely. A nine month weight, so it's most of the year round wearable. We've included two other coating options um, the uh, the twill, and that's the 85% um, Lums Golden Bale wool and uh, Super 100s. Beautiful. Is that? Do you think it's a fun, any better handling cloth than that? Well, I've actually got one in the charcoal grey that I've had for about 18 years, and it's still good as new. I mean, this particular this year we I was going to say last year, so I can't survive, but we've actually brought in a whole load. I think about six or seven new colours in Lums Golden Bell coating because it's really demand led more than anything. But it's just a fantastic coating. Mm. Uh, I would say for winter. The way it's set as well is that you've got it, it's the blast any really cold wind because it, it's got the beef in there. It's uh, solid without feeling solid. It's got a lovely soft drape. It, it makes a beautiful coat. Uh, and I think you get a lifetime wear out of that. I just love touching it and holding it and you know, feeling it. It's just, uh, you know, love it. Love it. So the element of charcoal grey or navy overcoat, and this is a, a char navy, right? So it's in between. Yeah, it's barely the colours. Um, we're trying to obviously trying to find colours that people can wear with everything um, without being too flamboyant. I, I don't think you can hear the way I'm handling this, but it just feels. <laughs> it's great stuff to hold. It's just fantastic cloth to hand. So next on the list, we have the. Extraordinaire. Again, Extraordinaire was a new edition of what was the millionaire quality, which Harrison's been famous for for many years. The difference being it's a worsted spun cashmere. Now, those people who know will know, but for a worsted spun and a woolen spun are two different things, even though the word wool is in there, it refers to the spinning of the yarn, the fineness of the yarn. So a, a worsted spun is a much finer quality yarn um, that makes a lighter weight, less if you want to call it a chunky look, it's a uh, much more streamlined look. Um, and so we wanted uh, to change the way we had the Millionaire before, where before Millionaire was uh, quite, quite, quite a coarse count, quite a thick yarn in worsted spun count. We wanted to make the cloth the same weight, keep the same shape, but maybe refine it and, and make it a little bit finer, and we could get the, the settings a little bit tighter to try and make the cloth a little bit more. Um, I would say more jackety, more less less chance of it to sort of move around. If that's the word I want to use, but keep the drape. So extraordinary came from that. Um, we again we wanted to make it in the UK, which is quite hard because the majority of cashmere 
is probably made in places like Italy and in China, but we worked with this very small uh, manufacturer in the UK, um, their own design team, and we produced what I think is a fantastic Worcester Spun cash bed. Yeah, the Millionaire Bunch was has been around, you know, for as long as that. Daddy and I have been in the, the trade twenty yeah. years. Plus. And a great bunch, but the, the designs in there were starting to get a bit um, old-fashioned. And the, the, the millionaire was, was in its time. It was it was very plain colours, and um, it, it was a fantastic drape. I mean, it, it was so soft, but it was a bit like knitting wool, refined knitting wool. It was you know, it's like wearing a, a cardigan, so soft. Yeah, but performance-wise, you know, it was questionable. You could argue. Um, so we wanted to sort of update that, uh, and we brought the you know the extraordinaire is, is that replacement. So um, yeah, it's a lovely collection of uh, is about twenty odd designs in the book. So here is uh, if you can see it, just coming off the luster of the cashmere. I don't know if you can see that. A lovely silvery, yeah. silvery. It's beautifully soft, but without being, you, you, you know, you're going to get the wear out of it. Um, it's just got a lovely handle. Another colour which is coming through is the sort of brown, blue, um, kind of, uh, sort of, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's more like a coffee colour mm -hmm. sometimes. This is a bit more coffee colour, um, just because it goes with, with so many other things. Uh, navy, grey, even white trousers, I don't know, even in summer. People hear the word brown and they're put off because they think it's like their dad's. Yeah, jacket. I think it's just got, I think brown's got a little cooler and, and also green's got a lot cooler as well. Um, people wearing more greens. Um, mm. Whether that lasts, I don't know. Yeah, we can see the overcheck as well, yeah. And that's that's a traditional check, but it's, it's there's more definition to it, right? It's a sharper check. Yeah, it's actually, like you said, it's a Glen check, but we've actually got a window pane on top of it. So you just to sort of, it's, it's not a Prince of Wales, but it is, it's, it's on those part, but it's, 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 a, it's a Glen check, really. Okay, and, and the size, for our knowledge, we think this is the best size. It's not too big, not too small. Um, I know getting it right is always a bit tricky, but in our experience, this size Glen is the most popular that we find. We've had great feedback from customers who've actually worked with the cloth and customers who've actually worn the suits or the jackets. So. You know, it's a it's a lovely thing to have in the wardrobe. The twist in the yarns and both the patterns we picked in the checks are um, really fantastic. I can see, yeah. you know, that go with pretty much anything, flannels, yeah. jeans. Yeah. And again, it's a separate, you know, I think the images that we created were pretty much, you know, it's all separate. But for that, I mean, not many people want a, a cashmere suit. There are, we do have cashmere suiting, but it's, it is a limited thing uh, for people who want to wear, they just want to wear a jacket. For the, you know, the two, classic laserings at the back, the, the plain weave and the uh, you know, weave, which usually comes in a more robust, hard wearing uh, high twist. It, and it's a bit more textured to, than just a straightforward uh, serge twill uh, looking one, um, although that is actually the most popular. The, the Moklino is also, uh, over the last couple of years, I think Moklino has been more and more uh, prominent in the market in all kinds of qualities. So I can hopefully show you the look of it. From the picture, you can just about see that, I think. Yeah, yeah, we can see the weave. Yeah. And if you can see, and if you can see me through it, it's got a lot more air through it. Um, like a sort of air, it's got the setting so you can see a bit more meshy yeah. looking. Yeah. And then the straightforward 12, 2 and 2 12. Again, it's the same colour blue, but just, just solid. And both these blues are. are not a true navy, are they more of a French navy? Uh, yeah, again, interpretation, but like the I know what you're saying, but what I'm saying is probably it is along the lighter side of navy mm. rather than too dark. We didn't want to go too dark with these, only because it gets too dark, it's hard, it becomes a bit too dull sometimes. It's a bit more light than these colours. We have a curveball here, uh, W Bill, which is uh, yes. part of the Harrison's LBD umbrella company. Yeah, W Bill uh, obviously was an acquisition we had took in 2014. Um, a good friend of ours, David Graham, who was the MD of Smith Woolens and uh, W Bill, uh, wanted to retire. And um, I've known David a long time, and he was very keen to um, 
sell to another family business. I mean, we are in the day of family business, we're owned by uh, the directors of all family. Um, and W Bill came with the, the, the package, really, and uh, W Bill, we rebranded it. We thought it was a little bit old before. Um, no disrespect to David at all, but we needed to update some of the patterns. And um, a few of the qualities we dropped, but some that we really liked and we knew sold really well, like the Shetland. Um, is so we, we reinvested in that one and we've got a new collection of that in the market quite soon after we acquired the, the company. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's within our different brands, the portrait hiding is more the shooting and hunting uh, or functional working to it, you know, but the W Bill is much more of the relaxed, casual weekend, um, roll neck sweaters, uh, more, it's to go with sort of, you know, weekends away. It's not, it's not to go out and hunting and shooting with, Obviously, you can do that, but it's uh, we have other tweets to sort of to sort of cater for that uh, that part of life. I mean, it's a lovely soft Shetland coat jacketing. You could have it as a coat as well if you wanted, or, or just a you know, deconstructed uh, jacket. Um, it's a slightly deset cloth that sort of lends itself to sort of nice shape. Um, so it is a much more of a casual sort of uh, look, generally. But we've added a lot of new colours and a lot of new checks and a few nice window panes as well. So it's so much lighter than 13 ounces. Yeah, it is. But it's, a lofty, uh, lofty yeah. finish. I think it's just the way it, it is slightly deset, and that means it you know, drapes much better. Uh, it's just a more, more of a shape to it when you when you put it on, especially the shoulders, um, especially wearing it. You feel a lot more comfortable in it. This is one of our popular patterns we do. This is the... Uh, classic Glen with the blue and the, and the lovely fawn shade, which goes, you know, double breasted, patch pockets, sort of look. It's for much, uh, much tried and tested. People love this pattern. That's beautiful, yeah. Um, I, again, it, I think you need to, hard, seeing it a pattern is always a bit harder. Once you put it on a coat, you know, it's completely different. And then there's the straightforward baby blue. Um, you can see that. The amount of colours of blue in there is just... Yeah, uh, well, you, yeah. Know, you know about the cloth, because it's not just one colour there, it's probably about ten to get that image, to get that look. But yeah, it's lovely. So it's so clean as well. It's, uh, mm. just nice, it's just nice to wear. Yeah, I'm always amazed sometimes when I you dissect these yarns and the amount of different colours and shades just to yeah. make one colour. Well, you can imagine if you've got a bunch like the size of our bunches, you know, or other merchant bunches, you're, the, the, the suppliers are holding so many different colours just to get the right look. And, and that's why these special cloths, they just look so, so nice and so alive. Because yeah. the last thing I, I hate is a flat, dead looking cloth. You've got to bring something to life and, and you know, the right ingredients, you can do that. Yeah, it just gives you the luster, doesn't it? When you yeah. get the, the yeah. depth. Absolutely. Absolutely, you can't you can't imitate that. You've got to put the ingredients in to get the result. And then we're moving on. Uh, last but not least, the, the spring ram, very nice uh, favourite. It was something we discussed with, uh, with our supplier. We, we worked with a, with a company called uh, Albrook and. Um, a very old friend of ours, another family uh, in Yorkshire, was uh, uh, Moorbrook, uh, Moorhouse and Brook. We used to make coatings many, many years ago. But Alistair Brook, who works with us, uh, looks after some of our markets for us. He's also a cloth man, and he came up with an idea that perhaps we sort of thought about um, using British cloth, using British uh, fleeces, which is unheard of a little bit. British wool, uh, which is very unusual now. Very unusual. Um, but what we liked about it was the fact that it's such a natural spring to the cloth because of the nature of it being an English wool. It's a tough over in the UK, you know, it's always wet, it's always cold, and that's why the fleece is so, I use the word, it's a bit wiry. Um, it's got a natural bounce, it's got a natural um, strength to it. Um, and that actually means you haven't got to do an awful lot to, to the fabric to get the, uh, you know, to not have it creasing and it performs well and it's super strong. It's already in there, it's a natural, it's a natural fiber. So then we discussed using a particular farm up in North, uh, near Thursk in, in North Yorkshire. And um, we actually 
bring all of those things together and manage to sort of get um, a spinner on board and, and produce all the, the cloth we have, which isn't huge. Um, it's 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 not a it's not a huge thing to bring around because we physically haven't got that much. We can we can get more, but uh, we do it in small batches, uh, and then we we make it in certain colours. And we've just introduced our second edition. Um, other things obviously factored in, obviously impact on the environment. And it's got a low, low carbon footprint. It's only produced and within 20 miles of start to finish. Um, it's, made it it's a lot of good factors apart from spring round, but, but you know. Add, add to its sort of its sort of cachet. Yeah, as Campbell and I said, we both own suits made from Spring Ram. Yeah, and yeah. find them very practical. I travel with mine as I travel a yeah, lot, yeah. and it travels very well um, out yeah. of the case, wearable within a, within a, an hour or two if you want to. It's, 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 it's a little pretty... bit. Obviously, the nature of the cloth thing, it is a little bit heavy again. And I keep coming back to that slightly heavier side, but it is. I wouldn't say it's bulletproof, but it, you can. You know, I, a colleague of mine had a bottle of red wine spilled over it on a grey, on the grey Marley looking glass, the whole bottle of wine virtually. And we had, we thought that was finished. I mean, we thought that was done. And um, it all came out. I mean, it was just, we got it, you know, got it cleaned professionally within about 24 hours and it was absolutely perfect. So it is, it has got a lot of benefits. I'm not saying that's one of the big ones, but it, it just shows you a natural fibres like that. What I found with my one spring round, it's almost um, when we explain to customers about um, benefits of wearing a cashmere overcoat, you get a warmth yeah. without the white. It's almost the reverse with a spring round, you get white without warmth with the spring round because yeah. it's quite porous. Yeah. So yeah. you get it, it hangs well, it, it looks sharp still, and, and it's still, you know, you can still feel reasonably cool. If you, if you get caught in the rain in it, it, honestly, you know, you hang it up and let it just naturally dry. You know, you need to be impressed, but it, you know, you, it will be fine. It's already been yeah. out there, in the out the rain for three or four years, getting soaked in the UK, so yeah, not really a problem. <laughs> I've worn mine wrapped until May June time, no problem at all. It's really, yeah. really oh. comfortable. And it, it's not again when you've got thick fibres, you can't get them always that close. So you've always got a little bit of air in there as well. So you could yeah. wear it all year round, really. I mean, you know, online, not not a problem. And the two patterns we're going for are relatively, um, you know, classic. Uh, yeah. Picking the the lovely petrol blue and green. Yeah. Uh, spring ram fiber just makes them really come to life. That you know, two tone melange. Right. I think this is probably more of a hairline spot of these designs. It's hard to tell because when you again you're using different um, different yarns, you often get different results. Even though you're trying to achieve one particular design, but this is the grey. So much silver in it, isn't it? What's nice about it is the grey is a grey for any thing. I mean, you could wear this for trousers, for trousers, for jackets, for suits, whatever. It's a really all-round grey. It's not. It's not flat. It's not a, a too dark. It's sort of in the middle. You know, it's a really nice sort of colour. I can um, see you through the evening wear as well, right? For yeah. Well, you you probably could. Yeah. I mean, it's unusual. Really good, but mate. It could, yeah. The colour, but like what I'm wearing in terms of shade. Um, yeah, it's sort of. I wouldn't say the melange type look blue, if that makes sense, but it's that sort of um, denim y, trying to sort of denim y, sort of dark denim kind of colour look to it. Um, but lovely, it's a different blue, it's not too navy, it's more, it's, it's more of a petrol blue. Yeah. See that? But you can see the weave look, you can probably just about see me through it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. again, that's the air, and that's just that's purely the fact that the yarn is so sort of wiry. It's just the fact that it naturally lends itself to being a, you know, a, a sporting, um, travel suiting kind of cloth. I mean, melange, you're telling you to touch on melange there. Melange is actually one of the things that we are getting more and more requests for around the world on, on because it's so hard to sell stripes now. No one wants a stripe suit. And um, how do you reinvent the plane? And I think melange is probably the way that everyone's going. Certainly, we found that on on all of our qualities in all types of cloth that we produce and sell. Um, melange is the one and I think you've got two colours there which you can use with anything. Melange is definitely a theme of our spring summer reds recollection of which a lot of it is uh, Harrison's and that goes through to your spring summer uh, cloths as well. Some of those amazing um, melange linens you have. Yeah. And 
you've got a couple of exclusives coming out, linens and cottons, not yet seen. We've extended the linen bunch, which is what I'm wearing today, which is the W Bill linen. Um, so we've some new colours on that, uh, so that's a large quality bunch, a number of patterns on there, and also a more comprehensive uh, cotton bunch. So we've got about, I think it's four or five different qualities, so you've got your standard uh, dry finished cotton, you've got a few denims, um, you've got a few drills, and you've got a few of the sort of what I call the sort of hop sack, uh, slightly more um, classic, uh, three or four colours of that. And also a few with a few with a little bit of elastic, just for if people wanted to wear trousers or wear shorts, especially in hot countries, it, it just stretches a little bit, is it going to give? Just to try, see what kind of reaction we get. Um, it's something we were asked for, and um, you know, we're happy to give that a go. Hopefully, the weather here holds and uh, yeah. this spring in New York is, is spring weather's yeah. changed. So. Well, we we're quite excited about the two because, especially the cotton bunch, we haven't done before and uh, it was a brand new thing for us. Any Huntsman customer wanting to order spring, summer, enjoy this weather, there's plenty yeah. of time. Yeah, we've still got time tonight, thanks for you. <laughs>